All right, so to get started here, what we're gonna do is take a look at exactly what kind of app we're gonna be building and talk in detail about how the app is going to work. Now, this is definitely going to be pretty important later on so that you know what we're doing and why we're doing it. So if you have a tendency to skip videos, I would highly recommend that you don't skip through this one just to get to the coding part, right? This is, this is going to, again, set up sort of the why and what of the code that we're gonna be writing. So as mentioned, we're gonna be building a note sharing app and it's gonna be something that will be kind of reminiscent of things like Google Docs, right? So uh, those of you who have used Google Docs or whatever the Microsoft equivalent of that is, We'll know that it basically allows you to write text documents, right? Write, uh, I don't know, your final exam paper, let's say. And it allows multiple people to edit that document at a time. Now, now obviously, it has a lot more features than that. It allows you to share it with different users. It allows you to give different users different permissions, etc. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at here in this note sharing app. We're going to be trying to mimic that kind of functionality as closely as possible. So... Anyway, our note sharing app, the basic idea is that users are going to be able to create notes and edit them, give them a title, etc., and share them with other users. Now, this will also include things like giving different users different permissions, right? Certain users we want to be able to edit notes, certain users we only want to be able to read notes, and probably the majority of the users we don't want to be able to access our notes at all. So that's kind of the basic idea. And again, I've chosen this application because I think that it gives us a great opportunity to get really into the nitty gritty details of building a full scale, full stack application with all of the functionality that you generally see on websites, but don't really realize is there, such as things like real time communication, which is something we'll be looking at later on as well. So anyway, let's just map out our app here. The main core of our app is going to consist of two main pages. The first page is going to be the page that displays all of a user's notes. All right, so first of all, it will display all of the notes that the user has created, and that'll be in sort of a list here. And it will also display all of the notes that have been shared with a user. So if you have user A and user B here, and user A shares a note with user B, user B is going to need to be able to access that note from this sort of home screen here, I guess we'll call it. We'll just call this the home page or the notes page or whatever. And that'll be in the shared with me section. So anyway, that's gonna be the, again, the sort of home page for our application. That's gonna be what authenticated users first see when they come here. We'll talk about authentication in just a minute. Now, the other core page of this application is going to be the page that allows a user to actually view and edit a note. So this is basically what will come up when a user selects a note from this list here. And if the user is allowed to edit the note, which is something that we'll get into more detail on later on, for now we'll just assume that they are, if a user is allowed to edit a note, then they'll not only see the title, so that'll be like my note, and the content of the note, which will be underneath it, but they'll also have an edit button, which will allow them to edit these values here, basically by changing them into text inputs with those values inside of them. Now, a few more notes, no pun intended, about uh, this page here. Number one is that the content of our notes will be written in Markdown. Now, for those of you who haven't used Markdown before, it's basically just if you want to think of it as HTML for non-technical folks, it's HTML, but much easier to write. And it's actually supported by most chat engines these days, such as Slack or Discord. It's basically what it allows you to do is style text, right? Like if you wanted to send someone a message, I love your new shoes, okay? Let's say they were wearing some kind of snazzy new shoe. And let's say you wanted to add a little more emphasis to this by making love in italics. Now in HTML, if you wanted to do that, you would have to use tags around this, which is kind of cumbersome and, you know, things like this tend to just scare non-technical folks when they look at them. So what Markdown allows us to do instead is simply surround this with underscores and that will automatically take care of making this italic. And likewise, this allows you to create things like headings, right? Like instead of H1, what you do is you just use a hash mark before a line that you're about to write. So you could say my thoughts, if you wanted to have this thing 
as an H1. And then if you wanted to have some smaller headings underneath that, you could write a double hash mark, which is H2, a triple, which is H3, and so on and so forth. I think you get the idea there. Anyway, if you haven't worked with Markdown before, be sure to read up on it. It's actually quite nice to work with, and it's relatively easy to support in React. So the idea, again, with this is that users are going to be able to write their notes in Markdown and see that rendered when they save the content of their notes. Cool, so those are going to be the main pages of our application. And just to clean up a little bit, I'm going to redraw those. We'll have our notes page or home page, if you want to call it that. And we're also going to have our, uh, we'll call this a note detail page. Okay. Now, in addition to these pages, there's going to be a few other key pages that we'll need to add to our application. So the first two of those pages, obviously, are going to be our login page. Okay, that's going to allow the user to log in if they already have an account. And our create account page, which will allow users to create accounts if they don't have one already. Okay, so those are going to be sort of the entry point for our application. And once we actually add user authentication, users are going to need to use one of these pages before they're allowed to see the rest of the pages in our application. So we'll have to look at that later on. And additionally, we're also going to want to have a page where users can edit the sharing settings for a given note, right? So if we have uh, a note here, oops, there we go, my note, and it's got some kind of content, which will basically make these things editable up here. But we're also going to have a share button of sorts that will allow whoever owns the note to control who's allowed to see the note and who's allowed to edit the note, that kind of thing. So we'll get to the actual design of this uh, later on when we actually implement this page. But the basic idea is that users are just going to be able to enter in the email address of other users and that will basically give them permission to access that note. Okay. So that's going to be the basic idea there. And then we'll just have a list of the users that that note is shared with. We'll be able to delete them, edit their permissions, and so on. All right, we'll get to this in more detail, but this is going to be the, I don't know, we'll call it something like the share settings page. And besides these pages, there's only a handful of other pages that we're going to need for other specific situations. The primary one is going to be the not found page, right? So obviously you're familiar with this page by now. It's basically the one that tells the user that they went to a route that doesn't exist. And this is going to be useful both in cases where they go to a route that our application doesn't support. And also when they try and look at a note that either doesn't exist or that they don't have permission to see. So that's going to be, of course, the not found page. And in addition to that, we're also going to be seeing later on how to do things like email verification, right? In other words, when a user creates an account using this page up here, we're going to send an email to their email address, verifying that they own that email. That's going to be a lot of fun, but that's not something we're going to take a look at for a little while. So we'll leave the pages related to that for later. So anyway, that's going to be the basic flow of our app. Users are going to have to enter in through the login and create account page, which will, of course, be linked to each other. Once they've done one of those things, uh, that's going to take them to the notes page, of course. And if they click on one of the notes here, right, which is just going to be displayed in a list in two sections, as we discussed, that will take them to the note detail page where, where they'll be able to edit both the content of the note and the sharing settings of that note. So pretty straightforward app, but you'll be surprised how much complexity goes into even something this simple. Now, really the bulk of the complexity is going to take place on this note detail page because this is where we're going to want to allow real-time communication. Now, what I mean by real-time communication is that whenever a user edits a note, We'll want those changes to instantaneously, or I mean, not instantaneously, but as close as you can get in the physical world. We want users to instantaneously see those changes show up in their browser. So in other words, if three users are looking at the same note, right, users one, two, and three, we'll call them, and user one makes a change to the note, we'll want those changes to immediately show up on user two and user three's browser. Now, in order to make this happen, we're going to need to use something called WebSockets, which we'll take a look at later on. 
So anyway, the point here is that there's gonna be a good deal of complexity in this application, which is good news for you, because honestly, the things involved in building an app like this are really going to skyrocket your full stack development skill set, right? It's really gonna give you experience with the vast majority of situations that you'll run into on a day-to-day -day basis when developing for a full stack app. And as I said, it'll also give you a great portfolio piece to show to potential employers, right? You can say, hey, look, I built this thing and and it uses WebSockets, it has user authentication, it has permissions for different users, and so on. And I can guarantee you, as someone who's interviewed plenty of full stack developers over the years, that they are going to be impressed by that. So anyway, hopefully this all makes sense. Hopefully you understand uh, not only what we're going to be building, but some of the potential complexities involved in this and therefore opportunities to learn, of course. So without further ado, let's get started building this thing. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.